Welcome to Apple Blossom and You. I'm your host, Sarah, known as Apple Blossom SF on Ravelry and Instagram. And I'm your co host, Matt, known as Navy1990 on Ravelry and M. Franklin1990 on Instagram. Welcome. Yes, welcome. Thank you. If you have are a returning friend, we appreciate you watching us each and every week. And if this is your first time checking out the show, welcome, and we hope that you enjoy it. This is going to be a little bit different of a show for us as I have a big update to do about weight loss. So we will we'll go ahead and we will jump into Around the Apple Orchard. So you want to yeah. start off with how our week has been? Uh, yeah. Monday was a little nuts. The roller coaster week. It was rough. It started out in tears for me, literally. And finished in tears for a happy reason at the end. So yeah, um, Monday. Well, it started before that. One of our puppies, Harvey, he was. We could tell something wasn't right. He wasn't playing with the other dogs like normal, and he wasn't eating, and all he wanted to do was just kind of lay around. It got to. It, it was about. Probably about 12 hours worth of really just knowing something was off. Yeah. Um, and finally on Monday morning, I just looked at him and he did not want to get up or move. And I was like, this is not good. So I, of course, called Matt and I said, we need to take him to the vet. And I don't have a good vet, so I don't like to take the dogs to the vet. That does not mean that they don't get all their shots. They get all their shots. We go to clinics. They are on their heartworm preventative every month like you're, they're supposed to. I just don't have a good working relationship with the vet in our area. Um, still trying to find one. Uh, this one that I went to, I have been before. And the last couple times I've been to him, I've not been very happy. And this time I have decided I will not be returning. He's snarky. He, he's very rude. And I, I got quite a tongue lashing for bringing in my sick dog and being poor, basically. Um, Harvey ended up having to have some blood work done and some other things done. Of course, by the time we brought him in there, he's only four pounds. He's just over four pounds. So he is a little guy anyway, and little dogs can get sick so fast. It oh, doesn't yeah. take long for them to be in, cr in critical condition. And Harvey was definitely at that point where he was we really, really, truly believed that we were going to lose him because he was so sick. He was just, he was not moving. And I, I remember sitting down with him on Monday after I called the vet and got an appointment. And I was just in tears, crying over the six-month-old little puppy that I was just thought we were going to lose. So we take him to the vet, and the vet is checking him over. And, of course, the vet notices he's de dehydrated. And the tongue lashing starts immediately right then. And I said, I understand. I knew he was dehydrated. I've been trying to give him water. He won't drink. You know, so it's kind of like it was, well, automatically I'm the bad guy and I've done something wrong. And that's not always the case. I mean, things happen so quickly and that's why we're bringing him to the vet. Right. And it's not like we don't provide water. There's water. Our dogs drink from water bottles, mm -hmm. just like a hamster or a gerbil or anything like that. We go through a lot of water. We do. 
We a, have, we a have gallon, two water bottles. A, a, probably about a gallon a day in the summer between all nine dogs. So yeah. they get plenty of water normally. I mean, there, there's always water available. For, and for this dog to be dehydrated, it wasn't for lack of trying. We took one bottle and tried to give him water. He wouldn't drink it. He was just lethargic. Yeah. So they ended up having to do some blood work because they couldn't, you know, they couldn't find anything on the surface that was wrong with him. And so I let them do the blood work and then he comes in and he's talking about wanting to do x-rays and ultrasounds and all that kind of stuff. And at that point I had to stop him because I didn't have very much in my bank account. I had a hundred dollars in my bank account and that was my grocery money. So I was just like, I need to know what this is going to cost. I only have this much money. And he started getting argumentative and like wanting to, well, don't let me, don't force me to not treat your dog and all that kind of stuff. And I was like, well, I'm trying not to do that. I want you to treat my dog. That's why I'm here. But at the same time, I was trying not to get have all these unnecessary procedures that would have cost me hundreds of hundred dollars that I just didn't have. I mean, if I had it, I would have spent it, but I didn't have it. So, you know, he got sick at a time where we just couldn't really afford it anyway. We had no choice but to take him to the vet. So I, he finally said, well, we can go this conservative route and was kind of snarky with that. And he's like, it will be 120 something dollars. And I was like, okay, I can do that. that so that took my grocery money and my gas money. It was, but, <laughs> but it was right before payday, so. But it was, it was still our grocery and gas money. Yeah. I, all is well. You don't have to worry. I stocked yeah, up. I stocked up. Um, we just have to be very conservative with our gas for the next week um, and make sure. I usually always have extra food in the house, so we were able to do it. The only thing is I don't have some of the fresh veggies I wanted, so it's a luxury thing. I can give up my fresh vegetables and eat frozen vegetables for a week. Not that big of a deal. But anyway, so he finally was just like, well, we can do this. So he ended up giving him fluids under the skin and he gave him some antibiotics and he dewormed him because he assumed that it could possibly be worms. Could be. We don't know. I deworm our dogs regularly anyway and they're on Revolution, which is their flea tick, heartworm, and it deworms them and they get that every month without fail. So I don't know. I don't know what was going on. He's good now. He's fine now. He's... Um, Eating with great gusto is a good way to put it. We had we had dinner Tuesday. Is that when we had when he? I I had set my my bowl of food down on the coffee. No, table. that that was that was Monday. Was it Monday? It was after we brought him home from the vet, and he had gotten some some medicine, and <laughs> I had set my bowl on a coffee table, and I knew he was doing better when he hopped up, and he's just tall enough he can get his front legs and his head above the coffee table and started nibbling at the edge of my food. <laughs> yeah, it was beef and cabbage, so he, which of course he was probably wanting because beef and cabbage are both really good with iron. Yeah. Um, so he was doing that. Yeah, he's and then, anemic, so he needs He was. Iron. We're, we're fixing that or correcting that. Um, he, for the first 48 hours, we gave him water every 30 minutes. It was a long day long couple of days. I was really tired. Um, but we made homemade Pedialyte um, with some sugar and some water so that that helped him. And he, we started feeding him. Of course, I was overzealous on Tuesday with food with him. And I get, <laughs> <laughs> I was feeding him every two hours. And he, being the happy-go-lucky dog that he normally is, was trying to please Mama and eat the food. Unfortunately, I fed him too much, and his stomach was just not ready for it. So he did throw up on Tuesday a couple times, and I was like, okay, back up off the food. We'll let him tell us when he's hungry, and that has worked much better. And he is yeah. back. He's almost eating what he's supposed to eat every day. I think he eats um, – we feed him like a fresh pet, like sausage-type food. He gets something different because he doesn't have any teeth. Um, on the bottom, he's got his back teeth and his top teeth, but he was born without puppy, and it looks like he was born without the bottom adult teeth. For whatever reason, they just didn't form. Um, so he eats a softer food. Uh, so we do it. It's like a sausage. It's really yeah, kind of cool. I've eaten it. Yeah. and it's um, pretty good. <laughs> so he gets that, and he eats a quarter pound a day is what he's supposed to eat, and he's eating about three quarters of that quarter of a pound. 
So I'm not good with math, so I, I can't divide that up. Maybe Mr. Yeah, Matthews. that's like all well. kinds of three sixteenths. <sighs> Maybe, yeah. So anyway, he's doing much better. So that that was the beginning of our week. But we came home to a lovely surprise oh on my gosh, Monday. Yes. So go ahead and, and it was, you can do your apple it was, candy. It was all we could do not to cry in the front oh, I was, yard. I was crying. I was bawling. Um, I lost it. I'll admit it. And it wasn't even for me. <laughs> I got off work and I knew, because I got off work a little early on Monday. And I knew she would, that Sarah would still be at the vet. So I drove up there and I'm sitting in the, in the lobby of the vet's office. And um, texted her saying, hey, I'm in the lobby. A few minutes later, she comes out can my husband come in yes fine so we do the whole vet thing we come home and I go out and check the vet and totally unexpected there's a package in the mailbox well she always gets packages of some kind or another so he there's, looked accusingly at me and said what is this yeah I'm like what's this I'm like, I have nothing coming I don't know I promise I didn't buy anything you know <laughs> Because there's always, you know, whether it's something from Amazon or, you know, something from one of y'all sending something, whatever. And the package was upside down. So I flip it over and it's got my name on it. I never get packages. Never. I think since I started... this week, though. Since I started knitting, I've gotten... Two before this week, I think. Two. So it was a little little surprising. No return address on the front. Had no clue what it was. Get it in the house. Noticed the uh, Royal Mail sticker up in the corner. So, okay. It's UK. Uh, opened it up. Bakery Bear t-shirt was in there. Um, let me see if I can get this. I hope the... the glare. Yay. Uh, we got two of the Bakery I Bear. I did get a button. We I'm very excited two. about it. Though. We did get I love two. It. She got one. This one's actually hers. Mine's on my knitting bag. And I got from Dan Jones a little... It won't focus on him. Little Star Wars Lego figurine. He has been officially termed an FO trooper. And then who else do we have to thank? Because and she was the reason the that... Reason, the reason I have the package, if y'all remember, I said that my gray t-shirt is my Saturday shirt. And if anybody wanted to send me a shirt, I'd wear it. So I have the shirt. It came from uh, Denise, known as Knitting Den. If you haven't seen her podcast, go over and check it out. Uh, she got hold of Dan and Kay and sent the package. So it was perfect timing. It was. It came on the perfect day. It's just when we needed it. It was a huge blessing on a really, really rough day. And like I said, it was all we could do not to be crying our eyes out in the front yard, <laughs> having all the neighbors look at us. You said I got another package. What other package? You got your flag. Oh, I did. That's not really apple candy. But no, it's not. It's not. Um, most of y'all know, and obviously from my username, I was in the Navy for 20 years. And my first ship that I was on is being, it has been decommissioned. It's getting ready to go to Texas to be scrapped and one of my friends that he actually introduced Sarah and I more on that later that's later um, he his stepfather found somebody at the shipyard where the ship is and worked it out so that we could send he sent flags for three of us to 
basically they were hoisted up on the flagpole and then brought back down. So they got to fly on the ship one last time before they scrap it. And I got that Wednesday. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I got the package Wednesday. It's got the flag and actually a certificate saying that it was flown. So that was really neat because it's my first ship. It was the one where I have the most memories. It was before Sarah. <laughs> Partially. Mostly. You were Mostly. transferring off when yeah, we you met. Were at the, you were at the end of that time. So most of it was before Sarah time. But that was my other package I got this week. And it was a good week for a couple packages. I needed them. Yeah. And Maddie's been practicing or going to rehearsals, getting ready for her show. That's this next weekend. We got a lovely surprise yesterday from our small group. Our small group meets on every other Friday, and we ha get together and we have a meal that I provide and um, dessert, and we do our Bible study. Well, they wanted to do something nice for us to say thank you. They bought us two tickets to, to go see Madison's show, so uh, we were just so blessed by that, and of course that made me cry. Happy tears! <laughs> yeah. And it was just, I was not expecting it. it came totally out of nowhere, was just totally blindsided by it, um, which those are the best kind of surprises when you don't know anything about them and they're just there. I mean, sometimes some t sometimes people can be talking and you can kind of get a hint that, hey, there's something going on. <laughs> and I, I, I kind of noticed something was going on. But it was like, he said he noticed it that night, so within 20 minutes. So he kind of thought there was something, but I just... I didn't notice. So. But, yeah, they gave us a card, and Sarah opened the card, and she read it, and she goes, oh, I'll open the rest later. Because <laughs> I was, I knew I was going to start, was going to start crying, so they're like, no, you have to open it. I'm like, oh, I'm going to cry. <laughs> we open it up, and there's two tickets for the music of the mouse for next Saturday night. So, so we're gonna we get to go and see that, which is awesome. It's awesome. We get to we get to watch the the dress rehearsals this mm -hmm. week because it's just too much of a pain to drive over there, drop her off, come back. You sit here for an hour and a half and have to turn around and go pick her back up. Yeah. So it's just easier. Plus, if you have some mindless knitting, you can sit there. Even though it's dark, you can mindless knit and. Uh, just listen to the music. The music's amazing. And you don't have to worry about, well, it's time to go pick her up. And, you know, it seems like every time I take her, it's raining. So I have to fight the rain to, to get there. And, but we're looking forward to it. Yeah, that'd be good. So should we do a... THM update at this time, or should we go ahead and answer a question? Um, we got a question from. We did from. I remember her name. Mission Sue. Girl. No. No. Family Diva. Yeah, Sue. Sue. <laughs> I'm really good. I'm bad. At I'll things. let you do this one because every time I tell a story, I mess it up. If I ever mess up anyone's name, please, please forgive me. I am bad with names. I'm bad with remembering names. Um. I, I'm just bad with them. I do my best, and I get to know people after a while, and sometimes I'll get to know them by their actual name and totally forget their Ravelry name or their clerk name or whatever, wherever they are. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> that's why I was like, um, that's why I paused. I remembered her first name, but I could not remember <laughs> her Ravelry name. I remembered so, her. It's Sue. So Sue asked us a question about how we met. So we've wanted to address that on the podcast for those of you that would like to know how we met. Um, I know the date. February, I know the date. February 22nd, 1998. Yep. Oh, so you, didn't, you don't know. I do know. 1998. 1998. 2-22-98 was the day we met. Yep. Well, anyway, I was 19. And I decided that... I was I lived on my own at this point in a little tiny apartment and I worked two jobs and oftentimes because I worked two jobs I didn't get any time off 
full days off. I hadn't had a full day off in, I think, like two months. And finally I said, that's it. I'm calling in sick. <laughs> and I went and I played hooky. And I went with down to visit a friend of mine because um, I hadn't seen her in a while. And she had been begging to see me. So I was like, okay, this is the perfect opportunity. They came and picked me up because I didn't drive. And the bus route didn't go very far. So I couldn't exactly take the bus. So she and her boyfriend came and picked me up. And I went and I spent the weekend with her. And of course, that Friday, it was a Friday night. I remember that. See? See? That it was. <laughs> I remember that. And she's like, well, let's go out and do something. What would you like to do? And I was like, it doesn't really matter. I'm just, you know, long for the ride. just want to have fun. And she started masterminding and scheming and wanted to hook me up with someone. Not and I me. kept saying, no. Not no, me. No, no, no. I'm not, I'm not interested. I just got out of a relationship. It wasn't a great relationship. It had been a few months since I'd been out of it, but I was just not ready for a relationship. So I didn't even really want to meet anybody. I was just like, no, this is not for me. This is not the right timing. But I'll go along and I'll play pool anyway. So she, of course, kept scheming and said, okay, well, we want to introduce you to this guy. I was like, fine. I'll go. I'll meet him. And, of course, he was much older than me. It was quite obvious. And I, I looked at him and said, look, I'm sorry. This, if this sounds rude, I said, you're probably a really nice guy. However, I'm 19 years old, and I have a feeling that you're just a little too old for me. Um, but, you know, we can chat. We can hang out and stuff like that. But I'm not interested in dating anyone. He was about 30. He was a friend of mine. And he was about 30. So that's my portion of how we ended up in the pool hall. What's your portion of how you ended up in the pool hall? Okay. Um, I was spending the weekend with my friend Rob and a friend Russ. Russ was the the guy that she was meant to blind blindly be hooked up with. They said, oh, let's go shoot pool. I didn't want to. It had been a long week. I was just wanted to sit around and do nothing, watch TV, and just sit there. And guys being guys, oh, come on, come on. You're not going to chicken out on us. So I said, fine, I'll go. Hop in the truck, go to the pool hall, meet our mutual friend who was dating Sarah's friend. Forrest. Yeah, his name was Forrest. Before Forrest Gump, I actually knew a dude named Forrest. And they're at the pool. Carried away. Because this is, I'll mess it up every time. So I was just pretty much sitting in the corner. And another friend of mine, who I hadn't seen in a while, had come in. And so I got to chat with her. It's the night I found out that she was pregnant. Um, which is kind of ironic. Uh, I can continue on that thought here a little later in the story. So anyway, my two girlfriends were, of course, scheming and trying to hook me up. I had mentioned that I thought this guy over here was cute. So they being, you know, 18, 19 year old girls are still a lot of times like, whew, High schoolish? Yes. <laughs> I was going to say elementary schoolish. <laughs> but yeah, high schoolish is a good is a good way to say it. And they were, you know, trying to get him to come go, over. Go and talk to him. Yeah, and really just pushing and all that kind of stuff. So we ended up playing a game of pool. And, you know, he got to teach me to play pool. I knew how to play. I'm not very good. It's still not very good. I don't like to play pool. It's not my thing. And the, the course of the evening, you know, we got to chat and all that kind of stuff, and it was time to go home. And I was getting ready to get in the car with my friend. Wait, wait, wait. Because there's one thing she didn't know. I didn't know how old he was. <laughs> she didn't know how old I was. She turned down the 30-year-old friend of mine. I was 27. Yeah. <laughs> if I'd known he would have gotten She had no clue I was 27. But I don't think you knew I was 19 either. I didn't. No, and we, so no idea. We stood outside and we were talking for a while. And my friend Erica goes, oh, why don't you come over and we can chat for a little while and you can drive Sarah home. I was like, 
What? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm not going home with a stranger. Absolutely not doing that. And I hear my phone going off, so. It's over in your purse. Yep, yeah, sorry about that. You'll have to ignore that. Um, so anyway, I was like, I'm not going home with a stranger. This is not happening. This is not safe. This is how people get killed. And this is Southern, exactly... Southern California. This is exactly the thought that goes through my head. You know, he's going to kidnap me. I'm going to end yeah. up dead in a ditch. <laughs> <laughs> because I'd heard the, one too many stories the, the about The nice looking mother. Navy guy is going to kill her and leave her body in the ditch. <laughs> because that's what we do. I don't know. It wasn't you specifically. And I still can't say that word. Neither can and, Emma. That's where she gets it from. <laughs> but it was just, you know, that's, you never did that thing. And it just wasn't a safe thing to do for a girl. So we go, we ended up at her house and we were talking and, and he was very polite and I remember it got chilly so he gave me his jacket and then, you know, he said he really liked me and at this point I, I was interested in him too. And he asked for my phone number so I gave him my phone number and then we chatted a little bit more and he asked to give me a kiss on the cheek at night and that sealed the deal right then and there. I said yes. And he gave me a cheek, kiss on the cheek. And as he was getting in the car, Erica and I were walking in the house. And I said, I'm going to marry him. And she thought I was crazy and laughed. And here we are 16 years later, two kids later. We have... Five moves later. Yeah. Yeah. We're still married. And Half a she's career been later. divorced a couple of times. So <laughs> I apparently am just a crazy one. Uh, our, we had a whirlwind courtship of all of two weeks before we got engaged and I remember specifically it was like the 12th date or the 12th day we were together and it was like our first our second or third date and he shows up with a dozen roses one for every day and I was of course just totally lost at that point so and I brought him to work didn't I did I bring him to your work? No, you brought him to my apartment. So I was, of course, a goner. And, it, you know, after that, it was real real quick to get engaged and all that kind of stuff. And he left. Um, I think for, uh, well, I don't know what day sealed the deal for him. So he'll have to tell you that. I don't, honestly, I don't remember. But I remember, I remember us talking because you had finally, about t day twelve, you had finally told me that you were you had orders and you were leaving, um, and I was, I was going, like, I was going to recruiting, and you were moving and to I had Indiana. To, I had to go to Florida for school, for recruiting school, and then I was being transferred to, of all places, Indiana. Yeah, which I'm from Indiana, but I'm not. <laughs> at that point, I didn't have any relationship. When I took the orders, I didn't have any relationship to tie me down or anything like that. So it would have been nice. I'd have been, you know, three and a half hours from my parents and, you know, be able to see family and all of that. So I took it. Yep. And <laughs> we had been together four months, a little over four months when we got married. Yeah, but we had a surprise before then. <laughs> yeah. She called me at recruiting school. Um, I'm pregnant. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, we did things a little backwards. We got engaged really quickly. Um, found out we were expecting Maddie. Got married. And then Maddie, of course, was born... Early. Really early. She was a preemie. And she was not due until December... <laughs> She was born in October, 10 days after his birthday and 10 days after my good friend Chrissy that I told you about that I, sh that I found out the night I met him that was pregnant, her baby was born. <laughs> so yep. we were pregnant at the same time. So it was pretty funny. But, you know, we, we didn't even have witnesses when we got married. He had a chief that he worked with that we didn't even know came in and be one witness and we needed two. So we had to pull someone from the hall. So we got married at the courthouse. We've never had a wedding ceremony. We had one night honeymoon. Yeah. We went to and I a hotel in Indianapolis. Because and... I was sick. I didn't feel very good. <laughs> and then the next day we go to the Indianapolis Zoo. And little Miss Pregnant over here gets up and rides an elephant. I don't know. I guess that's something you do. Apparently. I'm just crazy. 
So it, you know, but I wouldn't trade it. it. <laughs> I wouldn't trade it for nothing. I wouldn't either. And you know, it it was definitely meant to be uh, out of order. Neither one of us were Christians at this point, so uh, we admit that it was definitely out of order. <laughs> oh, way out of order. <laughs> but it was, you know, we've had a, a blessed time since then. So oh. we've got our two girls and everything that we enjoy. So yep. That is our crazy story of how we met. All right, THM update. Um, and we're rambling on, so this is going to be a fairly long podcast. I hope you guys enjoy it because we haven't even gotten to the knitting. All right, THM. The backstory of THM is on how I got started and really got working on things. I had been, and those of you who will have seen the podcast before we took our break, will know that I was sick all the time. Um, I was going back and forth to doctors. I was struggling with debilitating migraine headaches and I just was had horrible allergies and I was sick all the time and I just did not feel good and i had been in and out of the doctors for months trying to figure out what's going on something is wrong something is not right so finally my doctor thought I had pulmonary hypertension which is generally fatal at, at some point. You can live a life with it, but it usually ends up killing you. So this was not a good answer that I wanted, so she sent me to the cardiologist. And the cardiologist was kind of like, you're 30, I was 34. 34. Yeah. You're 30, yeah. Yeah. It's almost my birthday. I'll be 36 in three weeks, so. Um, <laughs> anyway. Three so, weeks from today? Tomorrow. 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 Sunday. Sunday. The 24th is on yeah. Sunday. That's right. Yeah. So um, anyway, the cardiologist was like, I don't understand why you're here. You know, so he was asking me all these questions like, have you done this test and this test and this test and had all this blood workup? My doctor hadn't done the blood workup, which was really weird that she didn't, but she didn't do the blood workup. So he ended up doing all the blood workup and, you know, scheduled me for an echocardiogram and a stress test and all that kind of stuff. And at this point, I'm convinced, okay, great, I'm dying. I'm going to be dead by the time I'm 40. <laughs> going to be dead by the time the results come in. <laughs> you know. Hey, your blood work. Oh, sorry, you're dead. <laughs> so I go through the whole process and he, you know, gets the blood work. And he goes, well, I got good news and bad news for you. And I was like, okay, what's the good news? He says, good news, there's nothing wrong with your heart. And I was like, yay, bad news, you're diabetic. I was like, Okay, and I, th I was shocked, but I wasn't shocked because I was starting to think that that could have been a real possibility. And I was just like, okay, and he's like, well, you can manage this, you know, on your own, go test a meter, you don't need any medication, all that kind of stuff. So I immediately left his office, called my doctor's office, and got a walk-in appointment. And I walked in and I saw my doctor and told and brought all the paperwork that he had brought with me. And of course, my cholesterol is really high and my triglycerides are really high. Um, of course, that's triglycerides being high has a lot to do with eating a lot of carby foods and sugar, which I didn't eat a whole lot of sugar, but, you know, breads, pastas, potatoes, all that kind of stuff is very carby and it does affect your triglycerides. So she came in and she gave me a prescription for a, a meter, put me on metformin, and um, gave me cholesterol reducing medicine, which I never took because <laughs> I, I, at this point I had some working knowledge of what I needed to do dietarily to, um, get my sugars balanced. So I went to an old faithful diet, which was Atkins. I knew the program really well. I have stuck with it. I lost weight on it before. However, I get very bored with Atkins. It, it's very restrictive. And I started that. And then I was just struggling with trying to get my sugars under control and just struggling with just the diagnosis in itself. And a friend of mine was like, I read about this diet. I've been following the, the uh, Facebook page for a while. He might want to check this out. Here's the premises. And so she told me about a book. I went and I read some reviews on, online about what the book was, what it entailed, and it looked really interesting. So I was like, okay, I'm still not convinced because, well, they eat carbs and, you know, carbs are not good for diabetics. 
a lot of carbs are not good for diabetics. You have to have right carbs. And I ha I didn't know which carbs were good or not. So I emailed the authors and I was like, okay, this is my situation. A friend recommended me. Is this a good thing? You know, it had people had success being diabetic on this plan, all this kind of stuff. You know, and she was, of course, very, very sweet and got back to me and said that, yes, it's really good for diabetics. We have had people lots of success with reductions of, of medicine and all that kind of stuff. So I was like, okay, great. I wanted to get started immediately. And <laughs> I ordered the ebook that night and I sat down <laughs> and I read the entire book in two days. That's all I did for two days was read the book. And, I, and, and it's not your typical diet book oh, where, you know, you get 30 pages of introduction and no. it's all recipes and all that. This book is you keep talking 70% introduction and 25% recipes. I'm going to get up and I normally I'll don't do up. that. You keep talking. No, I'll get up and I will get my book. Um, excuse me, I apologize for getting up. I don't normally do this. I like to have everything ready, but I do want to get this. But she sat down with the book. I'll keep talking while she's talking. And every five minutes, she's, you got to hear this. You got to, this is really cool. You got to see this. And at that point, yes, I was supportive, but when you hear, it's like with the kids. When every sentence out of their mouth is dad, dad, yeah. You hear, honey, check this out. Honey, 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 <laughs> honey. After a while, it's like, fine, I'll just read the book. I never did, but. This is the book. That's, what, two and a half inches thick? <laughs> How many pages are in that book? Uh, not counting the introduction pages and the note pages, the last page number, which includes all the indexes, is like six eighteen. Six hundred and nineteen pages. And my book is loved. There's, That's food. <laughs> yeah, there's food stains. Torn pages. Um, I'm sure there's dog chew on it. No, I have. Cocoa powder on the back, and in the recipe section, well, you can see it even maybe you can see it better. I do have my book tab, but you can see all the vanilla. It's on the side right here. <laughs> so this is a well used book. Like I said, I started with the ebook, and then I got this. And August first was the date that I jumped on the plan to begin with, and. I was blown away from the very first day. I had balanced sugar just right off pretty much the very first meal. And before I was having okay sugars, but I wasn't perfect at my two hour numbers were, were running about 15 points higher than they should have. Um, and then I ate my very first breakfast. I remember it was eggs, bacon, and I had half a cup of yogurt with some um, berries in it because I love berries so to be able to eat berries was absolutely divine so I did that and I was like oh I could eat this way for the rest of my life <laughs> and my sugars were balanced and you know I got read, read the book and kept reading the book I still read the book and jumped right on within six months of being on the plan I had reversed my diabetes I was completely off of medication I found that life got a little bit stressful for us so, and my body started fighting against itself. I wasn't diabetic, and I'm still not diabetic, but I just wasn't, the stress plays extra, it messes with your sugars anyway. So, after a couple months, I had gained a few pounds back. I gained about eight pounds back. And I was like, okay, there's, there's really something, you know, it's time for me to go ahead and go to the doctor and see what's going on. Um, and get possibly get back on the medicine. So I went in there, of course, and I, I, they asked why you wanted to see, and she automatically assumed that I put on 30 pounds, which I had not. She said, oh, you look great. You look like you've lost more. And I said, well, I did, but I ended up gaining. And 
And she's like, okay, we'll, we'll go ahead and put you on the metformin. She's like, I'm writing you a dose for this. You play around, find out what the right dose for your body is, and go from there. She goes, I know that you're not going to take too much or too little. You're going to find what works for you. So I still take the metformin as just a precaution to keep things because I'm right on that line. Yeah. It de really depends on the day. Some days... If my stress, if I have some time where it's really not stressful, my sugars are perfect and I'm totally normal. And then there's days where the past few weeks have been a little bit more stressful, so I'm like right at the beginning of borderline di pre-diabetes. So I'm right there. Um, it can't be classified as diabetes, but it's just I still have insulin resistance. Monday didn't help. No. <laughs> the stress of Monday with the dog did no. not help the sugars no. so at all. It, it was good. So my starting weight, when I started THM, I weighed, and let me tell you, this is a big thing for me to share this, um, it's embarrassing to, in a lot of ways. I was 295 pounds when I started THM. As of yesterday, I was 228 pounds. I have lost 67 pounds. I have been taking my measurements, and if you're on THM, you need to take your measurements because sometimes you will lose inches more than you will lose pounds. I have lost 36 inches, or as this guy pointed out to me, that's three feet. Three She's lost a yard. Feet. A yard. That's a huge amount. Yeah. A yard. And I've lost, I know, um, two inches off my neck. I've lost almost nine inches off my hips and of course I've lost from everywhere um, but it's just amazing I started out wearing a 24 and wearing a 3 to 4x top now I wear an extra large top and I can wear some large it really just depends on who who makes the shirt um, yeah. I'm finding is that's pretty common though for, for most people, yeah, it, the sizes differ between who, what brand it is. It's so, the same for it's the same for me, you know. A depending large on made, who it is, a large, it's a large to an extra large, yeah. and I now wear a size 16, not a woman's size 16. A regular go into any store I want, at, except for a junior store because I can't wear juniors. But um, I wear regular ladies size 16, and they're falling off. Yeah. So. I am. I have trouble with my pants. To the point, to the point that, <laughs> to the point that yesterday Madison offered Sarah a belt. It didn't fit no. because Maddie's about the size of a she's fence like pose. A size three, so you know she's tiny. Um, but hey, she offered. She said, yeah. "I've got three belts. I'll give you one." Yeah, you know it's time for pants when you don't need to unbutton them to remove them. <laughs> yeah. I'm at about that stage. Um, not, they could be a little bit looser. And I find the, the, the smaller I get, the way pants are cut are totally different. So uh, you can't, when you're in a larger size, losing weight, the pants still fit fairly well and fairly, fairly balanced. But I notice as the smaller I get, that is not the case with the pants. It's like you lose in one area and they just don't look right. They don't fit right. They don't stay on right. So it's I've been a constant revolving to get new clothes. And for those of you that are really interested in that, that's five sizes. I have lost five sizes. It's huge. I have some before picture. I have a before or a few. I haven't decided if I'm going to put in a few or not. Um, but I have some before pictures. I have some during pictures. And I have a picture from yesterday. So I'm going to go ahead and we are going to pause right here. And you guys can check those out and look at those. And we will join you back in a moment.
hope you enjoyed the pictures. Um, it was quite eye-opening uh, experience for me. I really needed to sit down yesterday and I needed to look at those pictures and just absorb it all. I it very much keep myself kind of sort of in, I guess, denial is the best way to say it. I'm in denial that it was actually that large. And I'm in denial. A lot of times I currently feel that I still am that large. Because um, I have a long way to go. I'm halfway to my goal. I have another 67 pounds to go. My goal is to weigh 160 pounds. Um, I want to maintain that for a while. I have a dream goal. My dream goal is 145. But I don't know if I want, I don't know what I would look like. And I want to look healthy and be healthy. And that's what you weighed when we met, right? Yeah, that is what we made. And I don't know if that's practical for a third, I'll be 36 at least by that point. To weigh 145 pounds, um, I was pretty thin. So, yeah. and I don't rem I honestly, I have a couple pictures from that time here, but I don't have many. So I don't remember what I look like. So when 60 is a nice goal, and I want to maintain that f at least for a few months to maybe six months before I decide if I want to continue and lose another 15 pounds. Yeah. So I'm halfway to my first goal. And I'm really close to a very big goal in my mind. Um, one week after Madison was born, I weighed 222 pounds. So I'm really close to that. And I'm, if you really think about it, I'm really close to Wonderland too. So that's exciting. And to give you an idea, when Madison was born was 98. Mm -hmm. So she hasn't weighed that much in, or that little, six, in, in about 16 almost years. 16 years. I will meet that goal before her birthday. There's, I, I know it. Her birthday's not till October 20th, and that's what, six pounds? Six from... pounds in eight weeks? I think I can do that. Yeah, seeing as how you're losing, so far this last year, you've lost more than a pound a week mm -hmm. on average. Mm -hmm. I didn't lose any this week, but I had I lost six pounds last week, so I didn't expect to lose any weight this week because my body tends to do, I'll do a little drop, like half a pound or a pound or a pound and a half, and then I'll do like a big drop of like six pounds. And if I do a big drop, I don't lose anything for like a week or two after that, which yeah. is fine because it all balances out. Um, so I wasn't expecting that. And yesterday, I went and I shared my testimony on the THM group and I'm going to see if I can pull it up here because I want to read what I wrote. Well, and while you're doing that, just so any of you guys out there that are watching this, Trump it's not just for ladies. Here. When I got out of the Navy, I weighed, for me, it was heavy. I weighed 185. I am down around, depending on the day, anywhere 150, 155. I've lost 30. Mm -hmm. I can't complain about that. Mm -hmm. More energy. Um, it's helped with work because we're always, we. I work in a warehouse, so we move a lot of stuff. And we do a lot of it by hand. So it's helped with, you know, energy. My back doesn't hurt as much. Oh yeah, I don't snore as much as I used to. I didn't no, even put don't. that. <laughs> I didn't, didn't even put that in my update. You don't, you don't snore as much as you used to. But my update was this. I said one year ago today, I started THM just after being diagnosed with type 2 diabetes. What a difference a year has made. I have so much to be thankful for. I started my THM journey at 295 pounds. This morning I weighed in at 228 pounds. 67 pounds are gone forever. I have also lost 36 inches this year. I started THM wearing a size 24 and a 3 to 4x top. Right now I'm wearing an extra large top and a regular and a pair of regular not women's size 16 pants that fit loosely. I have more energy than I ever thought possible. I still have more to lose, but I can rejoice in the fact that I am halfway to my goal weight. My health has also great greatly improved. I no longer suffer from asthma migraine headaches, and aches and pains. My allergies are gone too. For me, the best part is that my type 2 diabetes is gone for good. I am so thankful to Pearl and Serene for writing this book. I wouldn't be where I am today without God and THM to look for, and I look forward to living the rest of my life with THM. So I was so excited about that. 
And within a couple of minutes of posting that, I noticed that Pearl, one of the authors of the book, liked my post. And then she commented on my post. And right after that, I got a friend request from her. And... <laughs> And she became the ultimate fangirl. I did. I totally squealing. was squealing and Oh my gosh, the, the author wants to have a friend request. You know, yeah. wants to be my friend on Facebook. And she asked she asked me at that point if she could use my testimony. And let me see. I I wanna show this, but I need to uh, keep the this is on my iPad. On Facebook, so I I need to cover up my friends list. No, just do this. You do that. It should. It doesn't really show it, but I want to respect the privacy of my friends, and that's really not a good idea to do that. Okay. Huh. This is not going to work. <laughs> Here. Excuse me, why we have technical difficulties? Well, anyway, I. There you go. Do it that way. Do it the long way. Because then it doesn't show your friend page. There it shows. I'm trying to be normal. And I know there's some glare, but I wanted to show you that. So she asked me if she could use that, and she wrote a nice little segment, an introduction. And my middle name is Joy. And I've been going by Sarah Joy um, since my dad died, because my dad picked my name. So it's really, it's very special to me. So that was one way that I could always honor my dad is... On Facebook, I go by Sarah Joy. So she, Pearl said this. She said, today's testimony is from Sarah Joy F. Joy is in her name, but there is much joy evident here in her journey with, with health and food freedom, sharing Sarah on today as she celebrates her trim anniversary, which is what they call um, one, year. one year, or your anniversary of being a trim, healthy mama. And then it went in and it put my diagnosis, or with my testimony, what I had said. So I was really just excited and thrilled and just over the moon about it, just Call me at work quiet, cry, crying happy tears. Calling me at work, about, telling me about it. About that. So we have a special for all of you viewers in honor of me losing 67 pounds. And we're going to put it There's going to be a coupon right code. We'll put a coupon code down. If you use the coupon code TRIMIVERSARY, you can have one pattern per person 67% off of any pattern I have, with the exception of Among the Heather. That one's going to be discounted. Caledonia, nope. too? Among oh, the Heather. In there, huh? Yeah. Okay. Um, I'll talk more about the Among the Heather and that discount in the, in the um, middle apple pick and party section. So, if you use the coupon code TRIMIVERSARY, you can have a pattern for 67% off to help me celebrate my 67 pounds gone. This coupon code is good for the first 67 people. And like I said, it's a one-time use coupon code. So once the, the 67 are gone, they're gone. Um, so hopefully you guys will enjoy that and uh, get some patterns that you like. And she's got a bunch. And the good thing yeah. is I get them for free. Because, well, when you're married to the designer... Hopefully, but, hopefully you'll find something, you know, that you like. Oh, yeah. So. There's all kinds of really cool patterns. Jump yes. on. Yes. So let's jump right into Apple Pick and Party. I talked last week about our Apple Pick and Party and that we're doing it. I'm also calling it the Outlandish Knit Along. We are doing Claire Shaw. And I added two other patterns. I added the Jacobean. Because choices are good, right? Everybody loves choices. And then I added my Among the Heather pattern. And my Among the Heather pattern is my nod to the Outlander books. It is also our featured pattern for August. So that pattern, no coupon code needed, is 25% off for the entire month of August. And I have started my Among the Heather. It is written for fingering weight. It's adjustable. The pattern is charted and written. And I went ahead and I decided I have two. And I'll have to remember to show the finished ones. I usually show the finished purple one. 
in the end credits. So I wanted to start it in lace weight. And Will it work for sport? You could. You could. It, it's not written for sport, but you can you can do it. The chart the charts are adjustable, um, and it tells you on there how many times to do it if you're doing lace and or not lace um, fingering weight, and you can just adjust that. You can do it more, you can do it less, depending on what your needs are. So I am using the pink cat classic elite and the baby alpaca in silk that I had my Claire shawl started in when I realized I didn't have enough. So I have done, like, I've done chart AA, and then I've done, like, one and a half repeats of chart A. So I have started it in lace weight. And I have, I think I started my project page, and as I knit this, I will keep it updated on my project page on how many times I've repeated each section and how many yards I use. So if you choose to do one in lace, you can do it too, and it's not really showing up very well. So I apologize for it's that. It's always hard to see lace. It is. Lace is, lace is hard. So that's our apple pick and party. And it's... And it goes on till the end? End of October. End of October. We will randomly choose a winner for, what is it, $10? $10 or less. $10 or less giftable pattern. And if you don't want one ten dollar, we'll do two five dollars. Mm -hmm. that, that's, that is possible that's, cool too. That works too. Well, we were going to go ahead and we're going to announce our winner for the July in the apple basket pattern. We did draw this a little earlier. We use random.org, and I wanted to do it live, but she beat me to it and got it done before we sat down to podcast. And we don't cheat. And he's my verification. He he knows that I he saw me do it. I keep her honest. He keeps me honest, and I keep him honest. <laughs> so we have to pause. There is someone at the door. I am so sorry about that. We normally don't get a lot of visitors, um, but recently we took down our no soliciting sign, and that has been a big mistake. Yeah. So we have people coming to the door a lot more now. So I apologize for the interruption. And, of course, and we left you on the edge of your seat because yeah. we were going to announce who won the I know. in the apple <laughs> basket. And they're like, wait, wait really? tell us, don't leave. Yeah. Uh, if you hear the dogs barking, they'll calm down in a couple minutes. Uh, they're just... Don't you dare bark. <laughs> the commotion of answering the door and all that kind of stuff usually sets them off. So, without yeah. further delay, let's announce our July in the apple basket winner. It was post number 30, which was... Elle Mermaid. Her name is Tina. So congratulations, go. Tina. Get a hold of Sarah. Yes, send me a rapidly message um, when you see this and let me know which pattern you like and I will get that gifted to you. You have won a $5 or less rapidly giftable pattern. Yep. So congratulations, congratulations Tina. Good job. All the all of them all the projects were really yes. cool. And there was a variety too. There, you know, there was dishcloths and there were socks and mm -hmm. bears and there was a turtle. Mm -hmm. Somebody, one of the ladies, crocheted a turtle. Yeah. For those of you that don't know, if you are a member of our Apple Blossom in You group, every month we have a thread that you can put the pit, the projects that you finish and the month in that thread. They don't have to be started in the month. You can put them if they were some, if you'd started them beforehand and you finished them in August. It's all that matters. We got and one already. We do have one already. So that <laughs> and it's only is the second. <laughs> and ready to to go. So y'all got to put them in there, or that one's going to win. <laughs> I highly doubt. There's like thirty still more days. They've got plenty of time to get stuff in. I don't because I never seem to finish. You anything. never finished anything. All right. So. Let's see. Totally lost my train of thought now. <laughs> um, Let's go ahead and go to In the Apple Basket. No. What? Because you were going to ask if I had anything, so. Oh. No. I no. tried. I really did. I got. But, but it's not no, the right time. Because I promised last week that I would get the bear done, and that's okay. what I got. I think there's an arm stuffed. <laughs> no, the arms have been stuck. I don't know where the, oh, the other arm must be still in the bag. Yeah. 
So I'm a big fat fail on that one. As usual. Yep, as usual. <laughs> I do have two finished objects. I worked really hard, if, even with all that was going on this week, to get stuff done. So She did. She was a machine this week. I tried to be. But, of course, I just needed, I think after Harvey, I took two days where I just sat in it and listened to a book because I needed to just de-stress because I was going to lose it. Yeah. So, I have finished my petals socks in the flowering cabbage. So, those are wonderful and ready to go. So excited about those. And they're pretty and they fit well. And then I have finished my sequoia. It turned out beautiful. The pattern is Sequoia by Rebecca Hill, I think. I'm really bad with that. And the pattern and the yarn was gifted to me by Michelle, which is Strickland 66. And I am done with it. And it's not showing up very true. That's a... There you go. That's definitely true to color. Of course, you can't see the lace. I do have this already up on my project page on Ravelry. And I have shared it on Instagram so you can see it. It is, I call it my Georgia Peaches scarf. So it is lovely. Lovely, lovely. A nice long scarf. And of course it doesn't go with the pink. And finished object trooper is happy. Because <laughs> you got a finished object. Yep. So. And he is happy now. <laughs> I, at least somebody's happy. got a finished object. It's not me. I was really bored by the time that this was ready to come off the needles. I was about ready to scream and I did 24 of 25 repeats. I just could not finish the last repeat. I was like, this, I'm ready for it to be done. <laughs> uh, but I love it and it's, it's gorgeous. Beautiful. It just got very monotonous after a while and because I pushed to get it done, because I wanted it off the needles, it had been on the needles for a while and I'd been not really working on it for July. It was very important for me to get it off the needles in July. So I actually pushed myself much harder than I would have if I had just been working on it slow and steady. So that is finally off the needles. All so right. The two. Yes. Blooming up. I have nothing for the finished. Yep. Yeah, good. So I'm just going walking around the orchard. In circles. In circles. <laughs> I have, oh, I only brought three. He resurrects, resurrected a project, though. I did, but I forgot the other, oh, I'm horrible. <laughs> horrible. I have, and I'm in the middle of a row, violation number one. I didn't put a dicky do on this. There's another fail. When y'all saw my ranger last week, I was maybe here. Couple, yeah, he just cast it on. Two rows into it. So now I'm up to, you know, I'm almost to the point I need to start actually doing the body and not the, what's it called? Ribbing? Yeah, but I was thinking of a different word. Edging? Edging, that's the word. Apparently I have to read lines too. Yeah. But you've been married to me, and you know how to read my mind. <laughs> so, doing it in the Plymouth Encore, in a beautiful burgundy. That's actually coming up really good. It that. is. Heathery, burgundy colorway. They don't do names. They do numbers. So, I just, it's burgundy. Yep. I'm also doing a bakery bear, which you saw I have the head. I haven't put the nose on it yet. The he will part finish that nose. next week with the clothes. She's going to crack the whip. With I the am. clothes? With the clothes. By next week? Yep. I'm cracking the whip. I'm so slow. Okay. You need a finished object. I do. I'm sure everybody's getting bored of seeing, yeah, he did a ranger and he's been There's going to be for massive, massive applause for... When I get done. Yes. <laughs> we'll probably parades through the town. And Matt that. has a finished object. Yay. <laughs> Marching bands will go past my house. And all that. But I'm doing the bakery bear in this Cascade 220. It's kind of a, what? 
kind of rusty yeah. brownish color, which I think is really cool. And I resurrected my Desert Vista Dye Works socks, which she's go Sarah's going to teach me an afterthought heel on this one. Yeah, a true I'm afterthought heel. I'm not looking heel. forward to cutting open a sock. That just seems wrong to me. But it's a liberating. <laughs> hey, I'm going to trust that she knows what she's doing because she does. I do. <laughs> I don't. But this is called the Hamburg Philharmonic Colorway. Awesome stripy sock yarn. I'm getting spoiled with this. I like it. Yeah. Desert Visit Dye Works is some of my favorite too. Yeah. I've only got a couple skeins they, left they in the They do some really cool colorways. Yeah. And this one, you bought. Mm -hmm. Yeah. She just randomly chose one. She knows what colors I like and said, here you go. And then I have my, I don't have them with me, my uh, unwind yarn in a ducky colorway socks, the goldish, orangey, cool socks. That's all I got. My FO trooper is not happy with me. He has a place of honor. He goes in the china cabinet with Sarah's teacups and he oh. watches over the house to yeah. see who gets finished objects done. Right now... I'm not on the good boy list. Nope. She made the good list. I didn't. Mm -hmm. So I try very hard. Dan, your little trooper, is keeping an eye out. And I'm going to try and get something done this week. <laughs> I have to. This is what? Episode six on our new, since we took our break? Six, six or seven. seven? Yeah. A month and a half with no finished objects. I'm shameful. You are. Shameful. Well, I kind of cast it on all the things yesterday. Yes, you did. <laughs> Wow. There's, there's still a couple more that I really want to cast on. Can you can you wind this yarn up for me? Sure. Can you wind this one? Sure. I only had you, you wind, wind one. You wound one skein of yarn for me. This one. That one. The black for this one. Didn't I? There's that was two. the other day. So. That was two. Two. But I cast that on the other day. So you I have an apple candy, and I gonna, I'm gonna. normally I share that separately, but, but it goes with the today it is part of the Blooming Apples. And I again, I'm going to defer to my husband to pronounce your name correctly because I will butcher it. Last week, it was so sweet. It was right after the episode was live on YouTube. I That night, that same night that we published, I got an email saying that I had been gifted a pattern. And a Tara? Itara. Itara. See, I'm bad with names. Itara was so sweet. She gifted me the Cornish Dormouse Tea Cozy. And I have started it. She cast it on all the things. I cast it on all the things. And I'm almost done with this. I just have, I have the two pieces and I had some yarn in my stash. Good catch. So there's the two pieces that will go to be my tea cozy over my teapot. And all I have to do is the edging and the dormouse and then I can sew everything together and I'm so excited. I love this pattern. I cannot wait until my tea cozy is finished. That I think is going to be my project today is I'm going to finish this up because I want to use it. Uh, so I thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. You, you just made my day and made me smile and yeah. I've had so much fun knitting this. I actually wanted this done because I was going to cast on on Monday after I well, I was going to cast on on Monday, and that, of course, didn't go very well. So I didn't get to cast it on until, I think, Thursday was when I yeah, it was Thursday. casted this on, and I got the first piece done, and I got the second piece done yesterday. So today's plan is to work on the Dormouse and hopefully get that done and all put together. So I'm so excited. Thank you. Thank you so much. I cannot wait to show this. When it's done, and she was she was sitting on the, on the couch. Pot. She was sitting on the couch last Saturday. She goes, "I got an email." I said, "Okay." Oh my goodness! 
I got sent to Dormouse. Happy tears. Happy tears. She was very happy. And that is the Cornish Dormouse by Debbie Birkin. Debbie Birkin. Yep. And then I ripped out one project. I was working on the Caledonian Forest Cow, and I was using the Everlasting DK. And I didn't like the way that it looked. So I went stash diving, and I wanted to do the medium, but I didn't have enough yarn in any other color to do the medium. So I found some Dolce Merino, and the colorway is Rum Raisin. So I've recast it on the Caledonian Forest Cow that I'm working on so that I can take pictures and release the pattern, hopefully by the end of the month. And I haven't worked very much on it because I need to take a break. But there is the start of the cow. So you do all that and cable without the cable needle. I do. And all the, actually, I, I don't like doing ca I hate cable needles. But I'm one of those people, I have a problem with drop stitches, so when you cable without a cable needle. I she didn't tried start to explain off, it, though. And, and this, it was, I was knitting you know, a few years before I did it. You put these two stitches and they just kind of hang out there and that scares yeah. me to death because I'll lose them and then they'll un yeah. they'll fray out and, and my project's ruined and I'll, I'll quit. Yeah. So I started that and I took a little bit of a break from it this week. I didn't do very much. So I'm going to work hard and get this done this week so that I can start the large sample. And then... I casted on the Waves pattern by Kimberly Gintar, which she was so sweet, she gifted me that pattern, and I love it. And I have just started the cuff. You just got into a second color. Yeah. I am using... My ball winder needs to be replaced. It's uh, creating yarn barf. <laughs> so... There's the yarn that I'm using. I am using Vesper Sock in Mocha. And this yarn was a gift as well. I can't remember the name. I remember her name. Her name's Amanda. Uh, we traded. I knit her socks and I got a Vitamix. But I cannot remember her Ravelry name. So there is the Vesper Sock. And I'm so excited because I only have one other skein of Vesper and it's not a sock yarn. I think it's, it might be a sock yarn. It's one of their luxury ones. It's not one of the self-striping. So I'm so excited to be using this yarn to try it out. And my pick your own sock club started for August. Of course, I just started that last month. It's something that I've seen others do and I thought oh, this would be a fun way. So I started, Emma, huh? mm -hmm. I had last month, I had Emma pick 12 project bags and 12 skeins of yarn and she made them for me. So I reached in and it was originally in this bag, which is one of my project bags that I made. And I was thrilled. So there's one. It was in this one. And this is Desert Vista Dye Works. And this is in the blue, or the Russian blue colorway. It's been in my stash for a little while. Not too long. Yeah, you got that the same time I got this. Yep. And I love it. It's my favorite colors, blue and gray. So I started this yesterday. And these are for me. And I really want these done by my birthday. Um, so I've got just a few weeks to get them done. But it'd be really cool. That's showing up really, really nice. Love this color. It's lots of fun. And I have one more pair of socks on the needles. These are going to be a gift. I'm not gonna say who until she says it's okay. She she knows who she she knows who she is. But these are a gift yeah, for a young lady on Ravelry. And I hope that she likes them. I am using there it is. my Cascade Heritage, hand painted, and then there's the color information, 9770. I don't like when they don't give a I name. I know. It's really pretty. 
It's cool. I want to. That's the job I want is to name colorways. Name colorways. That's what I want to do. We'll have to fight for that. That'd be fun. Just sit there and oh, look at that yarn, and then yeah, so there's that. Name it. It's not showing up on the screen as green as it is. No, it's because pretty it's green. Pretty green. It's beautiful. Just nice shades of green. So I started that the other day, and that's going well too. I have two more, but they're the same project, so they'll go pretty fast. And you're fast with socks anyways. Yeah. You got three pairs of socks on the needle. Yeah. I got two. I can't finish a sock. Well, two of them are plain, so they usually go I'm going to go, go behind her back. She won't know it. I'm going to go behind her back and learn the short row okay. the way everybody else row. does. YouTube. YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'll go on YouTube and find it. After I watch the first series, first yes. episode of Outlander, which comes out today. Yep. I'm so bummed that we will not be able to watch the whole series, but I really hope it comes on DVD. But yeah. Oh, I'm sure it will. With the fan base that that series has. <laughs> Anybody have a DVR rioting, that want to record it for me? I'd be like totally happy. <laughs> All right, so my next project, I am using, this is Never Enough Time in the Knitting Den colorway, and it's... The Knitting Den. Yeah, and it's sparkly. I've got the sparkly base. I've had this in my stash for a while, since Denise had her knit along for this. I can't remember when. But I started a pair of socks in it, and I didn't like them. It needed, it needed something special. So... The special, the perfect special pattern came along yesterday. I am doing Limnet Crochets, uh, Teddy Bear, Teddy the Picnic Bear. And I'm doing two of them. And I've never done a toy out of sock yarn, so this is really, really, really cool. It's I have really, really tiny. It is really <laughs> tiny. That's why oh it took gosh. me a second just to get everything. You know, I'm struggling all, I'm struggling with this up. to do a bear. But I have both sets of ears. And those ears are tiny. And the muzzles done. So it's turning out really, really cute. You know, she's so. cranking out six pieces last night in, you know, 30 minutes. It wasn't quite 30 minutes. All right, 35. <laughs> but You're over-exaggerating my knitting abilities. Really? So, yeah. I am? <laughs> so I'm... Who's got projects completed? <laughs> so I'm really looking forward to that. That is going to be really, really cute. So yeah, it is. that's pretty much all we have. I do want to get an update on the graphics because I forgot to mention that in the Around the Apple Orchard segment. In the next few weeks, we were able to work out a partial package deal for some graphics. So we will have the graphics for the beginning and the end of the podcast. Those will be changing. And then in a few months, after we have saved the money, we will get the graphics for the Ravelry group and the thumbnail that the thumbnails that we need for YouTube and for Ravelry. And as well as getting a file that will allow us to do podcast buttons. And I think we're going to lean towards coffee mugs as well. We'll set up hopefully a cafe press shop. I don't know what's involved with that. So I need to check that out for sure before I decide that we're going to officially do coffee cups. But coffee cups would be, I think, oh, a yeah. lot of fun. And I got to see the preview of the new graphic yesterday. and It's absolutely gorgeous. I cannot wait and until we, had, we can we show it. We had two options we of we, that we could have gone. Yeah. They were both very similar. The backgrounds were that yeah, the, that that's all we're going to say. I don't want to say anything right. else. We chose just, one over the other. Yes, and they're beautiful. So hopefully next week, but if not, a couple couple more episodes, and we should have them for sure. Um, I'm just waiting for the bill so that I can pay it, and we can um, get the final graphics done. Um, once we get the final graphics, I will announce who's done our graphics and all that kind of stuff, and give a big thank Ooh, you and shout out. Me. I just yelled. Ooh. So I don't want to say until we have something to say thank you for. 
but those are coming. I'm so excited. And thank you so much for putting up with this split up episode that has been really long because of all the updates and kind of interrupted a little bit. So maybe we've called this podcast interrupted. <laughs> and remember, the coupon code TRIMIVERSARY is good for the first 67 people to get 67% off at any Apple Blossom and You pattern. All right. Well, I think we've taken up enough of your time, and we enjoy chatting with you, and we look forward to chatting with you some more next week. So bye for now. <laughs>